Good g'day guys, it's Calvin from the Car Tune Company in New Zealand. Today we're going to talk about why PDMs are so friggin' cool. What's a PDM you say? Well, we, we better start with that. Um, I'm talking about PDMs as in power distribution modules. So it's a little computer and you use it instead of having your relays and fuses. Pretty simple little unit. I do a heap of wiring, and if I do a full wiring job on a vehicle, I tend to go for a PDM where I can. Uh, yes, they are a, a fair bit of money to outlay to begin with, but they do make life a lot simpler, and it's sort of future-proofing the vehicle. If you're spending time and effort building a cool truck like this one, we'll have a, bit of a, a little bit of a look here. Of course, I have done a full video on this truck, a series of videos. And under the hood, we've got a VVTi Lexus. Here we go. So with a wiring job looking like that, it makes sense to use a PDM. So this one's located under the seat. I chose to use a MoTeC PDM, and just remind me, I must put a boot over that, a rubber protective boot over that. So I used a PDM 15, it was just enough for this job, I really would have liked a PDM 30. When I first mocked out, mapped out this vehicle, and did my planning, a PDM 15 was plenty for the job, but as these things sometimes happen, it sort of morphs and grows a little bit, and whilst it Amperage wise, that's plenty for the job. It would have been cool to have a couple more outputs um, and a couple more inputs. But it works just fine the way it is and doing for what I need it to do. Uh, the way it works is you have your switches, and I've wired all the switches on this um, negative. You can buy a keypad for them, so if you're putting in a race car, you're probably going to have a little keypad to light up communicating on the can, on a CAN bus. But on this one, we've put in normal type switches, and I converted them all to negative switching. The PDM prefers negative switching. We'll go around and have a look at the switches. For example, so the ignition switch, we've used a factory Mitsubishi ignition switch onto the back. Uh, the horn button, just a little aftermarket horn, chrome horn button designed, it can take 20 amps, but it's running next to nothing. For the wipers, um, I've only supplied power to the wipers, that's not running through the PDM as such. Indicators and lights is on a factory Mitsubishi stalk, again converted over to negative. The PDM takes all the switches in, all the signals coming in, and it includes a couple from the ECU, so fuel pump input, um, and fan input. They're an output from the ECU, of course, but an input into the PDM. And it uses those, and then it switches on each circuit appropriately. And we can program when it turns on and when it turns off, and all the conditions it needs for each one to turn on. So we've had a look at under the, finished having a look now. The secret. So this one's got a, a link ECU. And it's got a factory ECU. So those are both being powered by the PDM. And we've got an AIMS dash. AIM dash. I'll do a little talk about that in a moment. We'll put the seat down. And we'll have a bit of a look. Now, with anything like this, I am, so there's lots of different PDMs available too. One of the disadvantages with the PDM is it runs the, a, a proprietary communication tool. In this case, it's a MoTeC UTC. It's not really a, a big deal uh, if you've got one, but it does add a little bit more expense. It would be really nice if they just put a normal cable on it. For example, the, the AIM dash. I just cut off the cable the other day and wired up a, a normal USB plug. 
Okay, this kit keeps it really simple. The Link ECU, that's really cool. It's got a, um, again, USB, but it does come with a different fitting onto the ECU itself. If I widen the little adapter to plug in the UTC, and at the same time, I've I've got a little switch right beside the UTC adapter, which allows me to reset all the circuits in this. So if they have faulted, push that button, just clears all the faults. So I'm going to go into the software for the PDM. Right, so the, the PDM uses Motec PDM Manager. You can just download that for free. And most uh, different PDMs uh, do, of course, have their own software. The old airbags are having a bit of a move around. And we're going to go online. I'm going to get the configuration. So that's what's actually in this computer. And I'm going to monitor the PDM as well. So why did I choose a MoTeC PDM? Well, I get on really well with the supplier and we get awesome aftermarket uh, backup over here. I met the man through Sprint Boats and used a lot of his products as a result. The other day I, I needed an unlock code for a dash. I rang him at, oh, well, I contacted him at nine o'clock at night and I try not to do that. But, um, and. We couldn't solve the problem because Australia was closed anyway. But back to the PDM. This one, so I brought up here is all the inputs and outputs. So a one is it is on and a zero is it's off. So that's pretty simple. And I've got the list of all the inputs that are coming down this side. So we can see that the ignition is on, the start inhibit, which is through the shifter, is on. If I move that uh, shifter, that goes off. Fuel pump trigger, fan, and all, all the bits and pieces. On this side, it's got the outputs. So it's got the voltage of what's on that circuit all the way through. We can see that the ECU supplies using a little bit of voltage, a couple of amps there. Uh, the ECU power supply, that's this other ECU, the factory one, that's on. And the main ignition, even though it's on, has got zero load on it. We'll flick on the headlights and we'll see this. Uh, we'll see the park lights come on first. And then we'll see the headlight come on. And we've got a low beam on there, running six and a half to seven amps. I flick the high beam. There's a quick spike and it drops back. And the PDM will take up spikes just fine. And we can set a whole lot of different conditions for each of them. So we'll, we'll just close this. We can look over here at the input pins. So we tell a condition for each, each item. We can say the condition we want of it. So let's go to the uh, so high beam, for example. And it'll just be a, a, a false and a true at different voltages. So that's pretty simple to set up. And then we go to the output pins. And again, we can do the conditions. So the high beam, for example, we look at those properties. And there's quite, quite a few on there. Uh, the, so the high beam input has to be true. The headlight has to be false. So this one's actually got a low beam input and a high beam input. So the, the, the headlight is actually low beam. Start trigger is false. So as soon as you go to crank it, it turns the headlights off to maximum you minimize the voltage to the starter. The ignition has to be on, so that means when you turn the key off, your headlights aren't on, and your park input is true, which that's sort of the, the headlight input, but it does park and headlight. If I wanted to, I could put some notes on that. I also can set, and this is the, the interesting thing here, we can set the current on that circuit. So at 16 amps, it will reset the transistor and say, hey, look, there's a problem. But after one second, it will retry and I've put it down to always retry. So every second, it'll, it'll set a trip, it'll trip, and then a second later, it resets it to try again. 
for example, if you've got an item that's overheating, that will can often save it, say, in a race car or something like that. And you might manage to finish a race where you, you wouldn't if you didn't have the PDM. It would blow the fuse, it would be game over. But the PDM can reset. Other interesting things is uh, we don't have a flasher can. It doesn't, don't need one. We can just put it on. Um, we, we say that the condition, instead of an on, we have it as a flash. And the amount of time it flashes, I think it's in there. So the, the, the true time is 0.36 and the false time is 0 0.40. So it's on for 0.36, off for 0.40. And I can set that to however I want it. I can monitor each channel, check what's going on, check any stray voltage. Really, really cool item. The man is building this truck so he can learn about this technology in the hopes that he can use it later on when he gets another race car. And that's a fantastic, fantastic idea. Uh, and it's future-proof this truck because going forward, he's built a truck to drive. He wants it relatively easy to work on. And this way, sure, it's a computer, but that shit isn't hard these days. Easy to look at, easy to work out what's going on especially if I do go through and put all proper notes in it. I'm going to do a training session with them today, teach them all about it, and that'll give them a lot more um, knowledge on the unit. And he looks like he's going to be buying his own cable. So as a really quick summary, uh, PDMs are really cool. The downside, a little bit of the expense, and if they've got proprietary cables. But if you plan ahead, and you want to modernize a vehicle, hey, they're, they're an amazing tool to use. Um, and especially race cars where you want to monitor more circuits, there they really come into their own. Um, I, as I said, I pretty much, if I'm doing a full wiring job, that's the main, that's my first choice. I've learned that I'm going to go for more of the 30s because these jobs do grow. I need to keep reminding myself of that. But really cool. So if you're looking at them, um, hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into what is available and what can be done with the PDM so you can apply it to your jobs. And hope that was been helpful. Uh, if you did like the video, uh, please uh, click like on the video and subscribe to my channel. And we'll do a lot more stuff. Of course, normally it's 1UZs, but uh, this time, hey, it's got a 1UZ in it. And it's a really cool truck as well with a really cool PDM. We'll talk to you later.